I'll be introducing my guest um, shortly. I have with me Duke Mensa Opoku, who is with the City um, Newsroom and our parliamentary correspondent as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Duke. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, and I have Edward Tutor, who That's is right. a convener of the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana. Welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much, Zoe. Thank you. I hope you, you had a great <laughs> night. Oh, yeah, we did. By the grace of God, we have been doing Okay. All right. So um, let's move to our first topic, which has to do with the sex for grapes. Yes. Now, we've had um, a lot of reactions mm. and response. We've heard from the University of Ghana. We've mm -hmm. heard from um, Professor Jampo himself. We haven't heard from Dr. Butako, but his response was in the um, film that we watched. Yes. Um, and we've heard from other people as well. Now, there is a lot of school of thought when it comes to the issue of the documentary. I'll yes. start with you, Edward. Now, right. what do you make of the film that we saw yesterday? Is there indeed a case of sexual harassment mm -hmm. against these lecturers? Now, let's zone it into Ghana. Okay. All right. Good morning again to you, and good morning to all our discerning viewers out there. Now, this particular expose that has come out is a very unique one. It is something that has to do with a social contest, that is, in university campuses, and some of the things that happen between the students, the female students, and the lecturers. I must say that I'm going to discuss this issue not as if I'm a saint, because as human beings, we are all fallible, okay? We could all sleep at any particular point in time. But the point must be made that if you are occupying any position of trust, or you are nurturing a career, or you have high hopes of becoming a professional, the issue of ethicality is inexplicable, okay? It is something that you cannot decouple from your aspirations. It is part of you. That is why in any professional upbringing, so much effort is put into the teaching of ethicality mm. because the skills and knowledge that you acquire alone cannot define who you are. You are more defined by your moral behavior, your moral conduct, how you conduct yourself in that particular office. That is why the issue of credibility is so much very important. Now, I've analyzed the responses very well. I've watched the videos. And two things come to mind. The establishment of a crime and the issue of moral values, OK? So far, a shortfall of the documentary is the crime that has actually been committed. That is engaging a female student, exploiting her, taking advantage in exchange for a consideration, which is to give her good grace. That has not been established. But so far, what has been established has to do with the motive. You understand? It surprises me that a lady approaches you, a lecturer, engaging you, asking for mentorship and all that. When you enter any university, the first thing you are given is your ID. I attended Legon. There's nothing you can do on Legon campus without your ID. You understand? Mm. So the moment you enter into any department, you go into the registry, you want to pay fees, the first thing they ask you is your ID. Mm. Why didn't the corporates who were involved even do the first thing? What is your student ID? Which hall are you from? What courses did you read? Do some due diligence the, to, the, to the, actually the, ensure. The document now, you see, didn't say, but mm -hmm. maybe they could have done those well, things. Well, like what I want to establish here is the motive. The moment you did not even do some background of the person you're actually dealing with, and you just jump into the ocean, and you carry forth, means that the motive has been established that you want to actually do something. And the question must be asked. You didn't do it. It didn't get to that point. But if the opportunity had come, or if the lady had given in, mm. looking at the trajectory of proceedings that have come, the messages, all the proceedings that have been captured, if the opportunity had been given, would you have done it? Yeah, you're if, talking about Professor Jamposon, I believe. Because Professor Butako, we didn't really, um, apart from the, the, the encounter in his office, it didn't go further or beyond that. Well, all that I'm trying to say is, whether Butako or Jampo, there, were, there was engagement. There were explicit words. Kissing came in, side, side, side nigger, and all of those things. Side guy. Yes, side guy. Okay, pigeon small. We go, we go talk, <laughs> say side nigger. You know, the motive to engage in some form of sexual arrangement was established. Mm -hmm. So that the moment you begin to use such words with the person involved, it means that you are establishing the motive. And that if an opportunity avails itself, are you going to do it? That is why I believe whether the actual crime was perpetrated or not, it all boils down to ethics. Mm. When you are occupying any position of trust, 
there are ethical values that come with that, that particular position. And being a lecturer, you are bound by ethical values. And you have no reason, okay, to engage in certain things. It doesn't matter the processes through which you were tested. It doesn't matter the individual that actually was put forth to actually test you. No matter the circumstance, just be ethical. And it shouldn't be situation specific. Okay, so let, let me come to Duke. So um, the argument of Professor Jampo is that this lady in the first place is not his student. Mm -hmm. What does the university, you went to in, U, University of Ghana, what is the policy when it comes to sexual harassment with students? Is it a student you are directly involved with or any student at all? Well, let me, let me first of all say that um, this expose or documentary has given us the opportunity to speak about an issue that has been there for a very long time. I mean, if you would, there are some departments that before you go to at the University of Ghana, mm. it's folklore, it's folktale. That's, these are departments where there's a very high prevalence that lecturers prey on the female students. And they mentioned students. particular lecturers? Yes, particular lecturers and particular departments. Patterns. Where even before you step foot there, there are, I mean, there's folklore and folktale that that, that the, the lecturers they prey on set on, on on female on female students, so it's good. It's it's this 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 went around so much so that a year or two before I left the University of Ghana, there was a vigorous drive. The university took time and 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 took resources and effort to make a lot of noise uh, through radio universe and other avenues about the anti-sexual harassment policy of the university. Mm and went around to speak about a lot. When, I remember they went from hall to hall. Uh, Dr. Lambon Bini, at that time he was the chairman of the UTAC on campus then, and he was the head of the sexual harassment um, committee. Yes. They went around various halls to try and explain to students, which tells you that the University of Ghana at that point in time, or at that time, this was around 2013, 2014-ish, no, um, actually acknowledged that this, 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 this issue this, this was a problem in it, and it existed. Mm. But the challenge has always been getting evidence, evidence. getting evidence to, 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 to get the, the lecturers behind this punished or to, to face the law for, for their actions. But th th there's fear of victimization. Yes, which, which, the, which the policy says it addresses, that once you come up uh, through, and there's, there's a whole center that, uh, apart from the work that it does as research and teaching, which is Sergensa, Center for gender studies and mm -hmm. advocacy. Apart from the work it does with gender issues, it's also set aside to look at some of these things. So there's a whole center. Mm -hmm. Sergensa does some of these work together with the sexual, uh, uh, together with the sexual harassment committee that oversees this policy. Now, at the University of Ghana, there are two, two principles. Immediately you enter during matriculation, if you go through your handbook very well, there are two principles that define lecturer-student relations. And they are captioned with these Latin words that you are in in statute popularity, and the lecturers or the senior common room members act in local parentis. That's they are, they are your local parents there. Mm. So every kind of relationship or, I mean, what do you call engagements between students and lecturers at the University of Ghana, I don't know about other, other places, are guided by these two Latin principles. Which brings me to the question of what, so if you are acting as a lecturer or as a parent, for the students involved, mm -hmm. what, how far is too far when it comes to sexual harassment? The university policy, among other things, talks about whether they have the power or the influence to be able to affect your academic okay. progression mm -hmm. or any form of your, of, of, okay. of, 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 your, of, of your dealings in the academic discourse community, which is the university. This is what the policy, this is what the policy states. Coming to the, the documentary itself, mm -hmm. In all of these instances at the University of Ghana, it was made clear from the start that they were not students. So in as much as the problem exists and the university has recognized it and has taken steps to deal with it, the, the link between whether the person can influence them academically, can influence them socially, can influence any other aspect of their life or they're on that campus, the link is not there. Okay, but the these, these, Jampo, were, these were no they were not students. They were not students. But they posed as students, and the lecturers were informed. 
for in the case of Professor Jampo, she said, I'm a final year student. And had come there for mentorship. Yes. Was not was not the lecturer student. Not the lecturer was student. Not the but lecturer she student, attended but one of, of, of his of, of the lectures. lectures. People, people go for different lectures all the time. So that's that's the bit of the work that I'm finding it very difficult. The, as for the element of sexual harassment, the matter is going to go to court. The university says they may investigate it and all of that. But the element of sexual harassment and the fact that an impropriety, mm. I mean, from 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 what I saw yesterday, I think that some of the comments that were made, mm. even though Professor Jampo has come out to say that over a period of one month, the, 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 the documentary says they met for about three or four, four occasions. Times, yeah. Four times. And, in, and within those, from about the one month conversation or one month engagement that they had, they had been able to build a certain relationship that they could say all of these things which were informal. For me, for me, some of the things I heard, the conversation, it's very, very inappropriate. Very inappropriate for a, for a lecturer and, 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 and a student, even though the person may not be directly your student that you, you can influence. The element of come to my house, let's meet here, let me go and buy shoes for you, I want to marry you. I mean, no matter how informal of a conversation that both of them were having, somebody may say, well, they were two consenting adults. But so long as what brought them together in the first instance was a matter of an academic engagement. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you call somebody on a Sunday afternoon? Outside work hours, outside lecture hours, outside office hours. I think those are questions that Professor Jampo may have to answer. Well, he mm. said they were informal, it was an informal conversation and the rest. But the kind of havoc mm. this issue of sexual harassment has caused on the University of Granada. I know a friend who had to defer for a year because the lecture was so much on her on the trail. Oh. She had to defer for a year and come back and mm. try to restructure our academics and everything because of the kind of pressure and sexual harassment she was going through mm. under that particular lecture, mm. under that particular yeah. lecture. So it's a serious issue. I think the opportunity has presented itself. But for me, the evidence that has been adduced in the case of Dr. Butako and Professor Jampo may not be incriminating enough, but it's very, very disgraceful. Mm. Okay, so um, Professor Jan Paul says he's suing mm -hmm. the BBC today. Yes. Um, he has a right to, sure. to do so. But mm. um, let me come to the University of Ghana and its stance. Now, yes. we know that the University of Lagos has taken mm -hmm. action against these said lecturers. Will you say that um, the University of Ghana is being too slow in mm. reacting to these things, even though they had prior knowledge um, before it was aired yesterday? Yes, uh, thank you very much. And, and that is where... I find myself a little bit worried about this whole push job out the uh, University of Ghana. In which capacity was Professor Jampo dealing with this particular lady? His capacity as a lecturer, as a staff of the University of Ghana, before he was employed, what were his terms and conditions? Is he aware of the sexual harassment policy of the university? Has he subscribed to it? He has done that. In which capacity was the lady also engaging with him as a student? So whether the lady was a pseudo student or a real student, it does not matter. Mm. What matters is the circumstance, the arrangement, on what premise were they dealing. I would have expected the University of Ghana to take action, at least suspend him for now, because until it is established that grace were actually given or manipulated because of his relationship with the lady, for that one, criminality cannot be established. But what has been brought to the shore is that, indeed, there was an arrangement. Mm. And you see, Issues of this nature are very hard to prove in the sense that a lot of ladies find it difficult to come up to file reports and all that because they feel victimized and, and, and they feel that society is going to look on them in another way. The University of Ghana must take a cue from this and going forward, they must institute procedures and measures that can protect some of uh, the uh, victims of this particular situation and even put in place a structure or a measure that lecturers, after they have done their examination and awarded marks, there should be a secondary procedure to validate and cross-check all the marks that they, they give you because this is something that's, that happens. That's going to be a lot of work, considering the number of students that if you the have welfare, in some of the department. If, if the welfare of our female students on campuses matter to them, which I know it does, then some, some, some measure must be put in place in respect of, of the cost implications. Look, I know I've heard, we, we've all heard things, and you see, and some of the names involved, whilst we were on campus, we heard a lot of those things, but it was difficult for it to be proven, okay? So the University of Ghana, fine, take all the legal actions 
clear his, his criminal aspect, but what of his moral behavior? What of his moral conduct? If, 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 if they are doing this just to protect the image of the university by protecting the image of Professor Jampu, female students who will be dealing with him going forward, what's going to be their psyche? Who's going to be but their you know, disposition there are dealing with him? people actually defending him. There's a WhatsApp. I stand with, with, yeah, I stand with Jampo already. All those things can be put in place. But what becomes of the image of the university? What then becomes of the image of the department? And what then becomes of the image of what the University of Ghana stands for? Issues of ethicality cannot be compromised with. So far as this issue has come, and it has generated this whole conversation, it casts a bad light on the University of Ghana, what it stands for, and even other lecturers who are innocent, you go somewhere and say, oh, you are doing this, doing this, doing this, that. The University of Ghana must take a position on this. And even though they want to go to court, for the sake of the aluminous, for the sake of the students, for the sake of the university itself, and for the sake of the nation, because they bear the name Ghana, they must suspend the corporates and allow them to go to the full hall to establish. And for, and for all you know, you know, these kind of investigative pieces have come up for some time now. And I don't think that the investigators are, are, are naive that when they bring out such pieces, they are likely to be caught actions. Mm. I know, by now they know, number 12 and, and all that Anas has done. So definitely, they are going to also keep certain aspects of, 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 of the investigation so that in case it gets to the point where they must prove, they may release certain evidences that may, they might not have heard, have actually brought to the fore now to clear their name and maintain their, incredit, uh, their, 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 their credibility. So before the investor of Ghana would like to take this action, and Professor Jampo himself, he must be true to himself that really, am I guilty? Did I really say something that has not been brought up now that in the final analysis when it ends up in court and further particulars are brought, what is going to happen to me? I believe that he must do deep introspection and ask himself certain deep questions and come to the final conclusion that, hey, I have erred. Let me apologize, and if I have to go through counseling or if I have to subject myself to some form of reorientation, it will help me going forward. Better than he trying to be combative and it goes to the law court, the investigator is able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that indeed he actually perpetrated these mm. manipulative incidences. Mm. I think that he, he needs to do some introspection. Mm. Okay, Duke, could you say that um, this was um, targeted at um, people who are said to be allegedly notorious, or they should have actually opened this up. Because two lecturers out of the many in the two universities that we have, I mean, it's, it's a bit too low. The introduction to Dr. Jampo, uh, Professor Jampo, sorry, Professor Jampo's um, piece was actually, it, it, it mentioned the, the kind of clout he wields on the University of Ghana campus. And, and I mean, in the, in the, in the country, I mean, Jump, I mean I, Professor Jampo taught me from 200 to 400. Mm -hmm. Great guy, very smart. I mean, he, at a point in time, was the embodiment of, I mean, be, being young. Because I'm sorry, before you we went to the university, the thought of uh, even a doctor or professor, your, your imagination was somebody with oh, gray, yeah. gray hair and uh, you know, beard and stuff like that. But there's a young, dashing gentleman with his PhD, comes to class, I mean, teaches like, he knows the stuff. Mm -hmm. As for that, that one, nobody... Nobody can take it away from him. And has very good relationship with, with his students, both male and female. And I'll use I'm, myself as an example. For example, it's a great, it's, it's, a, it's a good friend of mine. I mean, just about two weeks ago, we even had a conversation and all of that. But if you look at the work, because the work was inspired by uh, Kiki Modi's personal experience. Yes. Her own experience at the, at the university and, 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 and all of that. Probably we may have to ask her the methodology with which she chose because out of the, the thousands of lecturers at the University of Lagos and at, uh, at the University of Ghana, based on what did, he, did, did, did she come up with the lecturers to go to? I mean, I did, there, there are a lot of other lecturers that people mention yeah. on the University of Ghana campus, I mean, casually, as people who may have done this or that. That's not to say Professor Jambo or Dr. Butako is part of the list of people that people mention on the University of Ghana campus. But we may have to we may have to find out why they decided to, 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 to take these people. Mm. In the case of Dr. Boniface, yeah. it state, it, the, the, the documentary stated, or in the, the narration stated explicitly that he is a very notorious, is very notorious for that. 
on, at, on, that, on that campus. I didn't catch that for Dr. Jampo. I didn't catch that for Dr. Butako. But for that, that of Do Dr. Boniface, he mentioned that he's, he's noted or he's very notorious for that. And probably that's why, after speaking to students, and they interacted with students who had been previous victims to, 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 this, to, this, or, to this ordeal. And that's how come they, they selected that. I think that the, the University of Ghana should use this as a focal point to really move away from saying, come and report it. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that to me seems like a very passive, passive position to take. That come and report, just like our, our, our leaders and, and our politicians talk about corruption and say, if you don't have evidence, evidence we can't. Yeah. It, it has to move away from that. The university now must, if they want to root it out, of course, of course they've, they've identified this as, as something, as a canker that is, that is eating deep into the fiber of the university. They should move from that passive position of come and report and bring evidence to us to, to, active, uh, to actively incentivizing people mm, to bring up these issues. Mm. Otherwise, and, and I think this was a very good opportunity for the BBC to take a step further, but with the evidence that has been adduced mm. and with the little logic that, I, I mean, the premise is very weak. They, right. they may not be able to go very far with the evidence, especially in the case of the University of Ghana. Mm. The logic is, is very weak. The premise is very, very weak. Okay, so on that note, we'll take a quick break here. When we return, we'll be speaking about the um, protest by the law students um, that happened yesterday that didn't end well. And we'll also be speaking about some computer hard drives that um, have been reported missing in the trial of um, the former Cocoa Board um, CEO, Dr. Uponi. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. You're welcome back to The Breakfast Daily. And don't forget to send in your messages. Um, the hashtag is Breakfast Daily. And you can also send your messages to us on WhatsApp, and we'll be reading them as well. The number is 0550-585832. 0550-585832. And we'll be glad to share your opinions and comments with regards to the issues that we have been discussing. Um, now, let's move to another issue that came up yesterday and I'll read this one from the citynewsroom.com. It says, police justify use of force against protesting students. Now the Ghana Police Service has justified the use of what it calls reasonable force to disperse agitating law students who protested to demand reforms in the legal education system. The police stopped the protesters at the Akweje Interchange in Accra, preventing them from getting close to the seat of government, resulting in the firing of rubber bullets and the use of water cannons, among others. There were reports that some students and were injured by rubber bullets fired by the police. Thirteen of the protesters were also arrested and later granted bail, while some sought refuge at the Canadian Embassy. But the Deputy Public Relations Officer of the Accra Regional Police Command, Inspector Kwabnadansu, told City News the protesters did not follow laid-down procedures. Quote, they attempted to go to the presidency, so we decided not to allow them to go. They blocked traffic and it was not easy, so we decided to disperse them based on their conduct. Now, let me start with you, Duke, on this one. Will, will you say that um, the police is justified in their action based on the reasons that they have given here, that they, they wanted to um, go to the pres presidency and it wasn't part of a scheduled arrangement? Shameful behavior. Absolutely shameful. I mean, for students who were unarmed, who had, from all accounts, had odd had been very orderly and very organized right from the start of the demonstration from Makola, Ghana Law School, mm. through to the High Court, uh, the new law court buildings, to the Ghana Bar Association, to the Attorney General's office, and were marching to the, to, 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 to the Jubilee House to be sprayed with water cannon, rubber bullets, and, and things of that manner for them to be able to the extent that they had to take refuge in Canada. Mm. I'm saying they took refuge yeah. in Canada because <laughs> in per, per international protocols and, 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 and international law, wherever the high commission and embassy of a country is, is considered as that country. country. So for them to have sought refuge in Canada with, us, or with that kind of brutality and, and being on list uh, is, is very, very shameful. What is their crime? They are exercising their right to demonstrate, to be heard. 
And this, these are not, in, I mean, not just I mean, ordinary folk. These are law students. Mm. People who are studying to be lawyers, they, they think that the system is, is, is unfair. The system is, it, it crashes people's confidence. It's not very fair. It's not transparent. It's not very open. And so they are demonstrating to put their issues across. And, and it's not as if, I mean, this is, I, so then now I wonder where the police took their instructions from. Mm. Because from all the accounts that we've had, from government, from the information minister, from the deputy chief of staff, who had been assigned by the, by the chief of staff to receive them at the Jubilee House and take a petition. He actually had express instructions to receive them and take a petition. This order did not come from any of those quarters. So the people that you are trying to protect, they are not in any way f f feeling offended or feeling threatened in any way or any manner by the students who are marching to them. But, because li but listening to Inspector um, Kwabna, he stated that they were actually, the student, the leadership was actually supposed to meet them yesterday mm -hmm. to now actually decide which route they will use. And they hadn't actually come to a conclusion on that. So they don't, they, need, they, they don't need the permission of the police to go on a demonstration. No, but the, the protection. The, the police has to be noticed. Yes. The police which they has did. to be given notice. The police has to give notice, which they did. They don't need the, the and police. This is the seat of write, government. Yes, the, no, the police doesn't have to write the right the police doesn't have to write to them. The police doesn't have, check every, no, so every, every the established democracy. The, uh, you saw when um, I don't know, it's there's a viral video which went around about when Boris Johnson had just gone to talk to the Queen and was going back to number 10. And the protesters were there mm -hmm. and how the police handled it very professionally. Ah, are we are we are we about that? Isn't it the same democracy that we are trying to practice? practice along those lines. Mm. It's, 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 it's very shameful. It should not be condoned in any sense of it. It is, it is a very, very... It, what was exhibited yesterday was very, very bad. I mean, these are, they, they, they didn't have stones. They didn't have, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sticks. They, absolutely nothing. These are guys in red with placards marching. And for the past two or three, the, for the two to three hours that they had started their march mm. from Makola through to uh, Ghana Bar Association, through to the uh, attorney general's office and the rest, they had been they themselves had assigned people who were directing traffic. Mm. So this argument of the, they were being disorderly and it doesn't it, it doesn't wash in any in, in any way. And the people that they, they they feel that they were threatening them, the chief of staff, the deputy chief of staff, they put at the presidency. They, they were said, they, were, they mm -hmm. were willing to come out and meet them, and even offer them, I mean some 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 form of I mean respite at the presidency mm. so that they can because this this form of governance we are practicing is democracy. A, 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 a major building plank of it is it's your, it's your right to demonstrate, your right to speak up. Mm. And if the police will take instructions and be law unto themselves and do, and, and do what they like, I mean, what kind of country are we in mm. then? Okay, your take on this, Edward. Now, the, the, the issue had to even turn political. Yes. It's very shameful. And I must say that, let me commend you. I think he has done justice to that side of the issue already. But I'd like to take it from the angle as to the genesis. Why did we even get here in the first place? About four years ago, when the mass failure started happening at the Ghana School of Law, we all thought it was a flash in the pan. Mm. But looking at how it has happened consistently up until now, it is so explicit that there's a conscious and premeditated attempt to reduce the number of lawyers that we produce. Look, the democracy we are enjoying is a constitutional democracy, which is strongly underpinned by the principle of rule of law. Every aspect of our social, economic, cultural right and political life is governed by laws. That is why it's not surprising that the Constitution has given power to Parliament to ensure that they can make new laws, they can amend existing laws, and they can even repeal obsolete laws. So the issue of lawyers being produced in the system to ensure that all these things are done in strict compliance with the law is very, very important. Mm. And it, the, 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 the basis that the Ghana Legal Council is given it's as weak as straw that you want to ensure quality. Meanwhile, we all know that by global standards, if you are talking about quality, you want to produce quality professionals, it is based on three things. Number one, the curriculum. Who prepares the curriculum? The Ghana Legal Council. Starting from the LLB all the way to the Ghana School of Law. The curriculum. Who, who actually pre prepares it? Who has the right to prepare it? How do you ensure that the faculties on the various campuses actually develop rich curriculum to ensure that it is relevant to happening that is happening outside there? Now let's come to the instructors. Mm. How, do, how do they ensure that before you become an instructor at a law faculty, you have, the, you, have, you have that professional clout, 
you are you are you are you are you are well informed and you have everything it takes to impart legal knowledge. Who does that? It's a regulator with the general legal counsel. You understand? Now let's the come to yeah, yeah, the, 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 the general legal counsel. Now let's come to amenities and infrastructure. If that's also a challenge, consistently for some number of years, you've realized that maybe let's just say we don't have we don't have adequate facilities. Make a case and ensure that we can we can employ measures to decentralize this. Look, now the power of digitization has gone beyond paying online, uh, 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 watching football online, and doing a lot of transactions online. It has now resulted to education. With the power of digitization, you don't need to go to a campus, even abroad, to have education. You can be in the comfort of your office or your room, and with, with, with this internet, you can enjoy full tuition, quality tuition, and when it's time for graduation, you can choose to go there. These are things that are happening. The world is changing, and we are here lazing around trying to inhibit young people who have the drive, who have the passion, who are willing to work hard to become lawyers. And now that they've decided to agitate, and you see, and I must commend those who were on the tweet yesterday, especially those that actually qualified, those that were admitted to the Ghana School of Law. Out of solidarity, they feel that this is an injustice. And even though they have had the opportunity, they feel that this injustice should be nipped in the bud and an end should be brought to it. And looking at what happened yesterday, in fact, it is, it is it's very, very shameful. When we are talking about the rule of law, chapter 5 of the Constitution gives absolute right for anybody who has the right to demonstrate. You understand? So when people are demonstrating and they've not shown any sign of violence, they are not showing any sign of opposition, they are not showing any behavior that threatens the peace and sanctity of that particular enclave where they are carrying out their constitutional right. I don't think that they need to be met with that kind of force. The police were was so unprofessional, and I think the presidency also some way somehow should be blamed for this because they made it known right from the onset that we we're going to petition the president. What arrangement was the video that I saw? I saw the deputy chief of staff uh, uh, Abu. Abu. He, he was in V8 and he was just passing by. Whether he was going to receive the petition, the V8. That was, that was God for dummy. Oh, okay, all right. You understand? So I think the coordination was very bad. And it's as if the seat of government has taken a posture that we are not going to respond to what you are doing. You are just going to exercise. Go and do it. But no, it should but, not but, be but like that. The spokesperson for the students said that um, the deputy, one of the deputy uh, yes. chief of staff, Abu Junapo, um, had indicated that they should come over. Sure. Um, actually, but they were scared because of what had happened with the police. So they, they couldn't go actually to the presidency to present their petition, even though they were given the opportunity to do so. This reason is not sufficient to actually sustain the kind of debate that they're actually putting forth. Did they see any kind of weapons with the students? Did the police capture anybody holding stones or putting up any untoward behavior? Did any member of them attack, uh, attack the police? You understand? There should, be, there should be indicators. If you don't pick those signals, you understand? You cannot conclude that you are scared. Scared of what? Young people who are actually exercising their, their, their constitutional rights. No, the right. students were rather scared of going there because of what had happened. No. Well, I don't know, but the report that I saw, they were determined to go there, but the police was actually preventing them. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I'm asking... And based on that interaction or altercation that happened, mm -hmm. they were afraid to go further, even when the deputy chief of staff had indicated that they should come and present their petition. Okay. It all boils down to professionalism on the part of the police. You see, we've, we've had these kind of scenarios over and over again where the police will have to use brutal force and compel people not to exercise their constitutional right. People lose their eye and, and a whole lot of that. Why should it be so? Mm. If, it, if it doesn't get to the extreme where the protesters are attacking the police, where they are vandalizing properties or they pose a security threat to that particular enclave, it is absolutely unnecessary. It is totally uncalled for for them to be spraying pepper, hot water, and employ other strategies and techniques to ensure that they control the crowd. Look, we've looked at protests in China, in the UK, Afghanistan, and we've seen numbers, millions of people on the streets. You understand? And even that one, they, they sort of go all out to even attack the police. But they exercise stringent professionalism and ensure that until it gets to the point where the life of the police is threatened, they exercise restraint and ensure that the protest goes on successfully. So going forward, I believe that we all should add our voice that the legal education in Ghana needs strict reformation. The system needs to be reformed. They should decentralize. They should employ digitization. You understand? 
we are not the only people to, to, to be doing professional courses. We have ACCA, we have CIMA, we have chartered insurance courses. Digitization, you can be in your office, register, and you get quality tuition, you get videos in HD, you understand? After the lectures, you even get transcripts of the lectures, you see? And you even get sessions with your instructor one-on-one, -on -one, at least 30 minutes a day. These are what people are doing elsewhere, and we are here lazing about, complaining that want to produce quality. Who is to in charge? Uh, who is to ensure quality? You understand? Do you blame the students for, for, for something that they do not contribute to? Are you blaming the law students who have the passion, who have the drive? Okay, so for you, does this bring an end to their protest or their agitations? Um, now, 13 people are also arrested. I'm yes. sure it's going to put some fear into some of them. They may not even want to protest again. Does it bring, bring an end to their protest and demonstration for, no. for these students to push home their demands? I call Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. Once this has started with legal education, who knows where it will go to? You understand? So everybody should be concerned. It doesn't matter whether you're a law student or, or you are not. It doesn't matter whether you want to become a lawyer or not. But you see, when it comes to the professional world, we depend on one another. Mm. Doctors will depend on lawyers. Lawyers will depend on doctors. Institutions will depend on accountants, auditors. You understand? The professional world is interdependent. So when it is happening somewhere, you see, it is, it is casting a threat to other professions because a time will come, you, you, you cannot go on with your work if there's no professional actually to work, mm -hmm. to validate what you are doing and carry on. Now, now let, let me bring another issue before you cut me short. That's to do with the issue of peer reviewing. In every professional world, peer review is very, very important. Now, peer review has to do with the tendency where one professional can validate or subject the work of another professional to strict professional standards and ensure that what you are doing is right. Now that they are limiting lawyers in Ghana, we want to produce few lawyers. What are they doing? Does that mean that we are producing people who are so few mm -hmm. that they cannot be criticized, you cannot do without them? They are going to exercise so much power, they are going to be charging so much. And, and you know, it's human nature. Once they have that special treatment and they are few in the system, it is surely going to lead to abuse, economic abuse, professional abuses, and because there are few, there's nothing we can do about it. Mm. So we all should add our voice and ensure that the reforms take place and they should open up legal education in Ghana. Oh, okay, do you can take a final take on this. Now, this had to even take a political twist mm. with the NPP responding and um, they having to go to former president John Mahama um, to actually present their petition. I'm not too sure if they had that in their plans, mm. but following what happened, it took a political twist. Does this auger well? Well, I mean, <laughs> with, with the former president, Mahama coming in, I think previously they, they met him. I mean, this is, uh, they met him at the Ghana Bar Association ahead of the preparation of the NDC's manifesto. He's going around meeting various professional bodies and faith-based organizations and the rest. So that was some sort of a coincidence. Okay. So I, I'm told that initially he even declined to, to meet to them speak, yeah. at the Ghana Bar Association. But after all the issues that happened at the Jubilee House, they decided to go to cantonment. I mean, this is, this is a movement that is trying as much as possible to get everybody involved. And yesterday, it wasn't only even law students or even law, lawyers or who were involved. Had other there, all, all manner of people, because there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are interested, who want to be, who want to be lawyers. Mm. If the system is opened up, they, they all think that it will be of benefit to them. Mm. And looking at even, even the, the kind of problems that we have, law is a tool for social engineering. So if we have many lawyers, or we have lawyers, quality, but, I mean, we have many but quality lawyers around, a lot of the, the challenges, I mean, people, there are people who are re really in dire need of justice, legal aid, there's, how many lawyers are there? All of these issues can be sorted out if, if we have that. But on the, on the use of the water cannons and the rubber bullets and others to disperse the car, I think the, the, the Ghana police service, if they really mean what they said yesterday in their statement, and, and the fact that they believe, if they really mean business, some heads must roll there. Mm. The, the, the officer who issued that command but for the water can. And, and, and I have, I have, I have, a, I have a certain, you know, I, I was a passion for this because in my young reporting life, on about four occasions, I've had to come face to face with this water cannon. Yes. At the Let My Vote Count Alliance thing, when NDC supporters marched to the, uh, to, to, to CID. the CID headquarters, the one that, uh, fortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, one of our colleagues at Multimedia had, 
ha, has had that issue up to now, which is being complicated and all of that. And another incident at Abu Gloshi, we had to cover that. So this and nothing has been done to the said all, officers. All of so, this, all of this, but but it's about time. Maybe because this time around the presidency is involved, the Jubilee House is involved, law students are involved. It should be the point where the police starts taking action and sanction some of their men publicly so that they know that ah, look at what is going on in Hong Kong. That extreme provocation. That's right. But they are very professional. And this has been going on for months, almost three months now. Look at what what, what is going on there. Why and, and here people people who are not armed, people who have no provocation whatsoever. Mm. Be very civil and you yeah. You're acting like this. Mm. Come on. Okay, so um, that's it on the <laughs> bit of legal education and the protest of yesterday. Now, let's go to our final topic for today, which has to do with the hard drive that has gone missing. I'll read again from citynewsroom.com. It uh, says, computer hard drive of court hearing Oponi's case and others reportedly missing. The hard drive containing records of the ongoing criminal case against former chief executive officer, CEO of Cocobot, Stephen Opuni, and CEO of Agricult Limited, Seidu Agongo, has been reported missing. The hard drive is part of a number of hard drives City News gathers have been stolen from system units in about five high courts at the new law court complex. Operatives of the National Security, who are said to be investigating the matter, arrested some workers in the affected courts as well as judicial service staff who work in the information technology IT department for questioning. According to sources within the judicial service, the alleged theft is believed to have taken place during the legal vacation period of the courts. Despite the theft of one of the most important devices of the criminal court, which has the record of the proceedings of the case since its inception, the suit was called on Monday and subsequently adjourned due to another court process at the Court of Appeal. Computers and recording devices were not functioning in the criminal court case when the case was heard. Meanwhile, authorities at the court have declined to comment on the matter. Now, there's just a brief background to it. It says Dr. Opuni and Mr. Agongo are facing 27 charges, including defrauding by false pretenses, willfully causing financial loss to the state, money laundering, corruption by a public officer, and contravention of the Public Procurement Act. They have both pleaded not guilty to the charges and are on a 300,000 each self-recognizance bill. Mm. Edward. Zoe. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time. I had some concert party, you know. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and you're just one of them. Look, the criminal justice system in Ghana has suffered some, some credibility crisis for some time now. And incidences like this, I think this is what the Ghana Legal Council or the, the Chief Justice should be concerned about. Mm. When you go to any court, we have the judge. We have the registrar. We have secretaries. You understand? What will, what, what will account for a crucial item like this mm. to be stolen? Who was actually in charge? I'm who sure was, they, who, they, 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 all those things have to be. Every court has security men. Mm. Security men from the state and also the, the, the judicial council. They also have their own security men who are normally in blue, black, and I think uh, light blue, you know. So there are two types of securities at every court. Mm. At least I know of the High Court and the Supreme Court. So how did this happen? And, they are not, and, and according to what you read, they are not talking. Look, I followed the case very keenly. And one, a, a, you know, a pattern is almost becoming clear that government or the state prosecutors are finding it difficult to prove the allegations against uh, the accused persons, OK? Because they bring witnesses, the witnesses do not affirm what they're actually saying. There are some documents they bring and they realize that no, this document will not come from them. Government is struggling. Real, there's, there's a real struggle to actually prove their case. So it is, it is, it will not be far-fetched for anybody to assume that this thing that is going on, this step that has taken place, it might be something just to make sure that they delay the case or the, the case does not come to a final determination. Now, let's look at the motive. Taking, taking an item or an equipment that has the, the overall record of the court proceedings, let's all anticipate what's going to be next. Is it, is, is it very likely that 
there will be a motion from either parties that, okay, we, we've lost the record. Mm. So let's start the process all over again to achieve what? To delay the process. Or the judges may say that, okay, we are done, but we cannot make, judge, we, we cannot make a determination because the records that we need to cross-check all that. So you see, it is, it is something that nobody can prove. But we cannot strike out the possibility, mm. okay, to find some technical basis to delay the process so that it will start all over again or the case will be a John Senedai mm -hmm. just because somebody does not want to be embarrassed for sheer incompetence at proving a particular case. Mm. Done. Okay, so um, before I come to Duke for his um, re reaction to this particular story, let me just read a few messages um, that have come through. A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, the sex for grade saga is alarming in our university. Something must be done. But why must BBC always focus or concentrate on Africa? Bobby Big Boss in Teacher Mante, he says, so since when did demonstrating become a crime in this country? I'll urge all good thinking Ghanaians to vehemently condemn the notorious and barbaric as well as unlawful brutality by the police in handing the innocent law students. The IGP must quickly act. Say Ewuku in this boy, um, he says that what did these demonstrators do to warrant this brutality from the police service? Or is this how far, is this how intolerant the Ghana police service has become? We should all condemn this barbaric act from the police service. Uh, um, Nathaniel from Akachi says, Professor, the professor should consider himself guilty. How can he buy shoes for a student and take her to lunch? He alleges that sex <laughs> is on the way. <laughs> and let me take um, this final one. Um, it says, although the police is to ensure peace and safety at times, their action against certain issues are abysmal. The legal education results analysis must be be displayed to them to know where they fall short in as much as to make amendment in subsequent exams. Duke, now let me come to you um, on the issue of the stolen um, pen drives and people who have been picked up as, as a result. We are gradually normalizing some of these things. It's bad. Just one, last week we heard about a cocaine turning into ephedrine. Yes. We, we, we've, we've also heard about cocaine turning into soda, uh, baking soda and cocaine and, and all of that. Two things. This is a, is a high-profile case. Yeah. A lot of interests are involved. A lot of people are, are following the case. So that should tell you the level of interest, interest in, in, in it. Yeah. Secondly, I hope, I hope they have a backup. I hope they have a backup because, I mean, the system cannot tell us that with the magnitude of interest involved in this case, everything goes to a central place and there's nothing like a backup. Nobody will believe that in this day and age of technological advancement. I hope there is a backup. And I hope that this would be a lesson to our judiciary to tighten their security, especially when such high-profile cases are involved. This is, not a, this is not the first time we're going to have such a case in the country. It would come up. But we have to be, we have to be proactive mm. so that when some of these things happen, the justice that is supposed to be served that's not delay. Okay, but um, um, there, some people have been arrested um, for this. Do you think they should be named already? Because when City News contacted them, they were unwilling to if, actually speak about the, the issue of the matter. If it's going to compromise the investigation, there's no need for them to be named at this, at this moment. The most important thing is for, is for them to tell us whether they have a backup or not, mm. whether this will have any influence on the trial that is currently going on. and and and. To, to really get to establish the motive of those. But is it likely to delay the case? If there is no backup, backup. it has to start up. Mm. The whole thing has to start again. Mm. They, have, they, are, they have to start up first. Mm. All right. So on that note, um, we'll end the news review segment for today. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining uh, me today. Thank um, you. Well. I was joined by Edward Tutor, who is the convener of the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana, and Duke Mensa Opoku, who is our parliamentary correspondent, as well as um, a colleague in the City Newsroom. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The City Tube. For exclusive breakfast daily content and other City TV programs. Like, comment and share with your friends.